the views and opinions expressed on Deliberately Linked are entirely those of the host, who are completely responsible for all show content. These views and opinions are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure in any way any kind of condition, or to promote any specific lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or personal practice. Nor is the information presented deemed to be accurate or verifiable. What is up, deliberately linked viewers? Lace them up and lock it in. Because on today's show, we're changing things up again. Yeah. We're going to talk about the truth behind a generation, yeah. meaning millennials. Mark and I are on it. Let's get it. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about this. I think there's a lot of stereotypes. I there think are. there's a lot of false facts. Yep. Um, I think a lot of the facts are true. But I don't. I think this is a topic where you cannot just cluster everybody together. Correct. Yeah, and something you guys are going to hear. Um, I personally actually sat down with a few individuals that are in managerial roles and that work with millennials, and I kind of got their feedback and opinions, some pros and cons of what it's like to work with a millennial. And something, some area, a area, I guess I, I should, should say, is that. A, a misconception of what a millennial is, yeah. um, is yeah. something important to remember is that it's not a generation thing. This is a culture thing. Yeah, I think it's been made into a generational thing. And I think, you know, what's, here it is. Here's where your disservice is. This is no different than really pointing at any demographic, mm -hmm. pointing at any type of uh, prejudgment you want right. to make. That's what's occurred. Correct. Now, I'm not saying every stereotype and every fact is wrong, right. but I think it can be applied to multiple age groups, multiple yeah. areas, uh, and I think it's really a disservice. For sure. It's really a disservice. For sure, guys. And diving into this topic, I know Mark and I both did a ton of research yeah. um, on this topic because, uh, once again, guys, th speaking of the generation we live in, the internet is fantastic, and there's just a ton of great literature out there on this topic. And so we're going to do our best to keep it short and sweet for you guys. Um, but before, before we keep moving, I do want to say, I do want to say, stay, stay with us on this because there, through my research, I have seen and found other videos, podcasts, literatures on the topic of millennials. Yeah. And I guarantee you, you're, we're going to put a twist on it of something you have not potentially seen before i have yet to hear anybody in any of the research i've read are going to talk about the stuff we're going to talk about tonight yes so stay with us guys we're excited to hear what you guys think but before we get going we got to shout out our sponsor visionary meals once again thank you for being with super us super exciting super excited big things coming guys throwing up here on the board we got a new dessert that just launched a buckeye brownie shout out to our chef justin gotchalk this chef-inspired dessert, guys. He came up with this fantastic idea, kicking off the season for this Saturday for the Ohio State Buckeyes, guys. O-H. I-O, baby. Let's there you go. It. There Let's you get go. it, guys. This dish is perfect. Throw out the macros. Enjoy a nice uh, dessert as you finish your potluck, your, your cookout, whatever it might be for the Buckeye game. Kick your feet up and, and, and blow your taste buds away with this dessert. Check so it as, out. as a non, um, how do I want to put this? As a guy who likes to watch what I eat, because I see it all goes in. Right. But as a guy who doesn't watch it as closely as some of our other wonderful uh, customers. Yes. I like to lean on the fact that sometimes you need a little fat to jumpstart your body. Hey, amen this, to that, brother. This is the dessert that's going to do that this, for you. This will for sure do that. <laughs> so my order may come in. It may be large. Um, <laughs> I can't say I'm going to share it. But so what you're saying is since we do have a meal minimum, yours are just going to be all Buckeye brownies. It's possible. Okay. It's possible. <laughs> okay. Very good. Good stuff. Well, good stuff. Visionary Meals, thank you for being with us today. Yeah. All right, guys. Ah, millennials. It's a tough topic. This I'm is. To, I, I just want everybody to understand that. It's a, it's a very tough topic. Um, and, and it's tough for multiple reasons. A, we do try to respect your time and keep our podcast uh, yeah. you know, within a certain time frame because we know everybody is busy. Mm -hmm. um, and we do try to respect that. But also, because this topic, um, it's sensitive. It is. It, it is, is sensitive, sensitive. Because it's not meant to offend anybody. Right. It's but I, I believe that you and I are of the mindset that I cannot get better unless I know where I'm flawed. For sure. And so some things we might say today, it's, it's not meant to um, really come aggressively at anybody. But folks, we're all flawed. We're yeah. all flawed in many areas. And there's things we can always do better. And as generations, mm -hmm. as individuals, um, we have to remember that not only are we of people, but we're raising other people. Yeah. So 
we, we do need to make sure that we are aware of what we're doing and how we're doing it. For because sure. it does have a large effect. It does. It, it really does. And, you know, unfortunately, in, guys, as you guys maybe have n- learned this throughout the show, um, I myself am obviously a millennial. Uh, Mark, you fall into... I'm like, are I'm you, like you're a in tweener. The, you're a tweener. I'm a tweener. Okay, you're right. So you're so, between the baby boomer, boomer and Gen X. So some studies say I'm right at the end of the baby boomer. Okay. Well, no, I'm not. The ba- I'm generation whatever that is, before millennials and then right at the beginning of millennials. Oh, Because right, baby right, boomers right. end like at 64. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So baby baby boomers are like 1946 to 1964. Yeah. And then you have, um, I don't know what generation that is. I can't remember. Um, but I, I'm like right in the tween because I'm born in 81. Yeah. So some studies say your millennials oh. start in 1980 and some say 1983. And it's on so, how it flows. So you're born in 81. So some studies do say that you are a millennial then. Correct. That's interesting. Correct. Okay, because I've never just, I guess I've never classified you as a millennial. But, but that is part of the reason why we're talking about correct, this tonight. We are. Because to me and to you, mm-hmm. being a millennial is not so much a generation. Right. Um, it's more of a culture. It is. It yeah. is. And that's something we're going to talk about. Um, but but diving in, diving in, I wanted to share a couple, you know, things with you guys from some interviews um, from some different uh, managerial, you know, positions by individuals out there um, that I that I uh, had the, you know, the chance to talk with um, and just going over some uh, for some quick pros and cons of subject A. Um, now, this individual lives in or is considered Generation X. Um, but a pro, just some fun facts for you guys. A pro by this individual, subject A, said they're um, a pro for millennials. They're t- uh, technically savvy, um, able to answer questions faster. Um, obviously, I think a lot of us know that. You know, growing up, growing up in the in this culture and society that we live in, we there's there's constant um, speculation and and, and I don't know, critical uh, comments about millennials. And, you know, it, for, for myself, it is refreshing when you hear um, a generation before millennials say something positive. Um, but definitely a con that came in from this subject A was millennials constantly need praise. Uh, they, need, they, they need this to meet their needs um, before they do what you need them to do. And I thought that was interesting because Two of the th- two of the four subjects that I s- that was able to sit down with said the same thing. So fifty percent of your people are yeah. agreement on that, and and I understand that, uh, and it actually br- <laughs> it brings up some really good topics. Yeah, I want people to understand though when we t- so when we when we break this down, I understand that every generation um, has like a title, and we right. really don't know where those come from. Yeah, millennials itself actually came from um, two authors. And that was that was brought to us in 1987. Yeah. Um, this author William Strauss and Neil Howe came up with the title of millennial. Um, the other more commonly scientific, I guess, generation title would be Generation Y. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I flowed in between X and Y. Yes. The, the generation born now after 96 is Generation Z. Yes. Okay. So I could see where um, not just millennials. I could see where my generation. I could. See, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say my because I don't know which one I fall in theoretically. <laughs> I could see where Gen X. I could see where Gen Y and Gen Z all fall into that category. Right. And I think a lot of it, though, comes from your background. Correct. Keep going. Yeah. You're I, on I, I, think, I think these uh, individuals who are raising these children, mm-hmm. um, you raise traits into your children. I'm a father mm-hmm. of five. Yep. Okay? So you raise traits into your children. Um, so if, if it's a case where your child, it does, I don't care what they do. Let's just say they, they stack one block on top of another block, and then you throw a party for it. Mm-hmm. The child is learning that. Yes. Um, it's no different now that we now have graduation for kindergarten classes. I never had that. Um, right. And I did not experience that until our fifth child. The and graduation. I, okay. Yeah. And I literally was like, what are you, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. There's, there's, a, there's a graduation. And then when our second child left third grade, there was a clap out. Okay. So what we're doing is we're instilling in these children that all these milestones, I'm not saying they shouldn't be praised right. and say, hey, you did a great job. You made it through F, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But now the expectation is, is, whoa, I made it through the third grade. I deserve a party. Mm-hmm. So I can see where when you become an adult, you're like, whoa, hey, I gave you a really good sales report. Yeah, You should throw me a promotion. For sure. And you or s- you should tell me how great I did. Correct. Show me the praise. You Guess see- what, though? As a, as a business owner... That's what I pay you to do. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for doing your job. Yes. Exactly. Yes. No, good No. Good points. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add on that? No. I mean, no. For the sake of time, no. Yeah, okay. Because that's a whole other wormhole. For sure. For yeah. sure. 
Yeah, no, so um, diving, diving deeper into this topic, guys. Um, you know, I thought, I thought, you know, we constantly hear all these, these negative things about millennials. So I thought, you know, let's, let's just hear for fun here a couple fun facts um, about millennials. And there are really good. There is actually a lot. If you are there listening are. to this, there is a ton of information about yes. the personality of this generation. Yeah, and, you know, a couple that stood out to me, guys, listen to this one. So millennials are earning 20% less, less. than their parents did. Correct. Isn't that crazy? Like, but with that being said... Millennials are far more likely to give their money away to they whether, are. yes, to whether it's it, it's starving children in Africa or yep. or some form of a a, a good um, I don't know how, how do you want to title that well charitable. So I charitable. Had, I had the percentages go. right here for you. Survey showed that eighty four percent of millennials make an annual charity donation. Up to seventy percent also volunteer their time Correct. to causes they consider Correct. worthwhile. And then also, according to the to another study, the average millennial gives about five hundred dollars to charity each year. Yeah, yeah. So, give and take, I guess. Yeah. In a way, um, you know. So I think I think those are those are really um, some interesting and just you know worthwhile facts to know. Um, along with you know, millennials um, are now numerically numer- numerically numerically. Thank you very much. The dominant age group in the U.S. workforce. Yeah. yeah. So. That one's definitely growing. Um, well, I, that makes sense. I mean, for sure. Um, if once again, if we're sticking to the category of the generation, there's roughly 76 million millennials in the United States. It's a ton. Yes, that's a, that's a freaking lot. That's and a ton, yeah. you, you got to realize these millennials that this the person that gives us that numerical number is, is breaking down from 1978 to 2000. Right. So. Most of those people from 2000, if even if you're born in 2000, you're now 19 years old. Correct. So you're working. Yeah. Yes. You yes. Know I mean, and there's nobody in 19 from 1978 minus myself that's probably mm-hmm. retired. Yeah, and I think I think that brings up an interesting topic about, you know, back then we'll say <laughs> uh, years ago, um, long hair, tattoos, or stuff like that are, were never acceptable in the workforce. Well, no. there was a song about it. Was there long-haired hippie children need not apply? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I took off. I tucked my hair under my hat and I went in and asked him why. I could sing the whole song. Dang, I did not know that. That's yeah. hilarious. See, well, hey, this right here shows I'm not Gen Y. <laughs> he does, he I'm Gen X. This. I'm Gen X. <laughs> you just yeah, you, culture, culture, man. <laughs> but no, I think. Um, but but seeing the 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 change and percentage and numbers of yeah. people um, are are are. are dominant in you know the workforce i think that's you know socially and culturally that's where you have start, started to see some more acceptance acceptance um in that in that field of long hair and tattoos because those millennials are starting very slowly but starting to move into those managerial roles correct well okay so this is what everyone listening uh including myself we had to wrap our mind around okay um the world evolves Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we can go all the way back to when smoking was taboo, mm-hmm. to when women smoking was taboo, to to you know um, drinking establishments right. were taboo, dancing was taboo. Everything evolves. Okay, and it, it always heads in a certain direction. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, as a man of faith, the direction is never fully a positive. It's always a direction towards the end. Okay. okay. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying the acceptance of long hair and tattoos is acceptance at the end. What I'm going to say is, is the is the closer we get to the end, the more acceptance we are for people who they are. Yes. Because we're looking through a lens of Christ. Good point. Because Christ doesn't care if you have long hair. He doesn't nope. care if you have a beard. He doesn't care if you have tattoos. Nope. What he's looking at is your heart. Correct. And just because you have these traits, whether it's it's um, gauges in your ears, whatever it is, we got to look past that. And I think it's a lot of what tonight's show is about. Mm-hmm. Because we need to stop this prejudgment, whether yes. it's millennial generation or mm-hmm. culture, whether it's your skin color, whether yeah. it's uh, male or female, yeah. whether it's your background and where you came from. It should not matter. Right. We've got to get beyond that and just become human. Well, and I think that we're, we're coming up to um, you know, a very crucial point in the show. But before we get there, I think it's important to discuss some of the stereotypes that you know uh, we, we oh, yeah. hear on a, on a yeah. daily basis, um, you know, it's it's not common um, to hear you know uh, about millennials and them being referred to as lazy, uh, poorly prepared, without aspirations, entitled, self-absorbed. I mean, I, I truly think 
the list can go on. I mean, I through my research, do this if you're at home right now yeah, by a computer. Please do. Please type, do. Type in Google and just type in, quote, like, so, quote, millennials are, end quote, and just look what comes up. See what comes up. I'm talking about killing, screwed, broke, therapy generation, lonely, worthless. This is the mindset, the stereotype, the, the culture change, the, the viewpoint that millennials are being scrutinized as. Basically. Well, and the focus of these studies, the focus of all these studies are strictly on them as the individual. Yes. No one is looking back and saying, okay, your school system did not prepare you. Nope. No one's looking back and saying, oh, they're broke. They don't do anything. They're lazy. No one's looking back and saying, by the way, most millennials per percentage have a college education. Mm -hmm. They don't look back and say, oh, they also have over $100,000 of college debt on average. Correct. No one's looking at that and pointing that out. Yeah. So as we say here and we want to tear down a generation, now granted, I'm the last person to give anybody an excuse because you control what you can control. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you cannot discount outside factors. Right. Okay. We have now a school system that is not preparing kids. No. Very few school systems are setting kids up to be successful later, whether that's in the trades or whether that is in college. Right. We have school systems now who don't even give grades. The school system, it's truly failing America. It is. Like financially, uh, emotionally. Correct. Uh, you name it. It is failing Correct. America. And it's, it's, it's So then you want to go to college bad. and you want to better yourself. Well, I'm going to make you spend $100,000 on a degree where FYI, chances are your max out of that degree is forty grand a year. Well, how does a forty grand a year job mm -hmm. not only live, buy a mortgage, and complete the American dream, Correct. and pay off a hundred thousand dollar college debt? And yeah. when you get married, FYI, that's doubled because she has one too, or he has one too. Right. So we're setting a generation up to fail. Yes, we are. We are. And you know, talking about those stereotypes, guys, I, it's stuff we hear every day. But I think something to remember as we hear those stereotypes. Those stereotypes are simply just opinions. Well, and they I think are. we need to sit back in our seat and be like, okay, well, what are the facts? And before we started this podcast, Mark, you said something very, very well said about the facts, yeah. you know, pertaining to millennials. Yeah. And, and that had to do with, um, you know, learning about the person of who they are personally. Well, and I think this is where we came. I think this is where we came into the show. Uh, Josh and I, and I know some of the guys he interviewed and through some of the research I did, what you realize is, and why we now call millennial in this room, we're calling millennials a culture, is because I can I know millennials, per se, culture, who are seven years old, who are now Gen Z, yeah. and I also know millennials who are 65, 66, 67. Right. Okay? So before you judge somebody based upon what they look like, I, I'm at the point now, it's like everybody deserves the opportunity to show you who they are. Correct. Not who you think they are, to show you who mm -hmm. they are. And if you go in, I don't care what it is, any situation, and you're closed-minded, you've already created the end of your opinion. You've already created it. Yeah. Okay? Your assumption is what it is, and nothing they're going to do is going to change that. What that does is that clouds your judgment. Yeah. We need to stop doing that. We, we need to go into these situations and say, okay, here's a prime example. This kid comes to me. Uh, he doesn't look up from his cell phone. He spends way too much time on his cell phone. Um, he sometimes isn't the attentive to detail because mm -hmm. good enough is good enough. All right. So when do we become part of the solution and stop just continuing to encourage the problem? Yeah. Because that's what's occurring. For sure. So we'll fire him or we will mock him or we'll literally condemn that person mm -hmm. for some of the less than beneficial traits they have. Yeah. Instead of stepping them aside and being adult. When I was growing up, my mom said all the time, and it's because she needed the help. It takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And it took a city to raise me. Right. Okay, because there's a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but why has that changed? Like, as a, a person who employs a younger generation on a regular basis, um, I look at all of them as, like, my children. So if you don't know something, I teach it to you. If you have a question, I answer it for you mm -hmm. or I show you. Now, if you continue to make the same dumb mistakes or if you continue to ignore that and not better yourself, okay, then we have an issue. Yeah. But in the beginning why would I not take the opportunity to help them be the best them? Right. But that's what we've done as a culture. Oh, you're a millennial, you're trash. For sure. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I think you, we've already touched on it a little bit ago about, you know, we're seeing uh, evolution, we're seeing change, you know, yeah. uh, you know, as we, as we speak, uh, day by day that there is change. And, you know, something that I've already said on the show a few episodes ago and that I'm going to come back to and kind of we're going to 
change change the, the lens that we're looking through right now um, is, you know, another common thing that you hear about millennials is they're poor communicators. And I know when we, we decided to come across this topic about tag team and this topic, you and yeah. I were texting. It was a lot of based on that idea alone. Yes, that they're yeah. poor communicators. And, you know, I, I made the argument, and like I said, you could argue both sides, um, but I made the argument that, you know, I think by saying millennials are poor communicators is the wrong way to put it. I think um, millennials actually are the best communicators. The, they are to date the best communicators. And there's studies that support that. Correct. Yeah. To, to date. And let me, let me tell you why that is. And it's simple because if you are a millennial and you're watching or listening to this, um, you can understand this. To date, you know, millennials communicate more than anybody, than any, any other generation, yes. we'll call it. Um, you know, we are millennials. We, I say as myself too, um, are constantly we can, we're texting. Uh, we are constantly uh, emails, de- de- yeah. de- DMing emails. Um, man, I had a fact on here that it said, uh, where was it? The, oh, millennials spend 85% of their day on mobile devices. Correct. But what are they doing on those mobile devices? They're communicating. They're communicating. Sure, yeah. some of that time, BS here and there, yeah, but they're communicating. Um, now, I think the other lens that you can look at it in is through my interviews, I did find people that, that said, well, but not face-to-face. And that subject A did state that when communicating with some of her staff members um, that do fall in that millennial Gen X or Gen Y, excuse me, um, generation, that she has to find herself um, slowing down and e- explaining and almost teaching her staff things that she would never have to even entertain teaching to to her staff years before the, that generation of hey Correct. um you know you shouldn't deliver something that to like that to a customer um, or you should you should smile when speaking to someone or make eye contact simple things that most of us understand but. To, to date, you are seeing these employers having to teach their employees so, these traits. So here's what has occurred. And this is where I stick to millennials as a culture. Because I know older individuals mm-hmm. who that's how they communicate yeah. is through the phone, through email, through social media, yep. through text, whatever. Right. The difference between the di- where you really get caught in that triangle is from culture to generation is even the older culture that we could label millennials still know what it's like because they grew up in an era of face-to-face communication. Yes. Okay. Now we have created, I say we, we have to take some ownership in this, Mm -hmm. a generation who does not know how to communicate face-to-face. Correct. They do not know how to take constructive criticism face-to-face. They don't know how to respond to it. They don't know how to give it. No. Okay. Because it's scary. Mm -hmm. Now I grew up, I grew up, you know, look at me, look a man in the eye. That's how I grew up. Yeah. A lot of kids didn't grow up that way. You need to realize that when you're communicating with your children all the time, or let's say even your friends, and it's all through your mobile device, you're taking some of the personal out of it. Mm-hmm. This is where we, when we've spoken on this platform about balance, it cannot be a lost art. Right. I just had two young women in my house in the last month who came to me to practice interview skills. <laughs> They're going for their first real interview their nervous as all get out. They don't know how to do it. And I'm here to tell you, I should have videotaped them because they were the worst interviews yeah. ever because they were talking to me like we were texting. <laughs> and I oh, said, wow. you cannot do that. What's what, that's what they do on a daily basis. Correct. Though. Good for them, though. No. And, Congratulations to yeah, them. And for- guess what? They came. We sat. We spent about an hour each. We scripted responses to certain types of questions. They yeah. went in. They both got their jobs. Good for them. And I'm not even talking about – I'm not talking meaningless jobs. These, both these girls are working for the number one university in the state. Good for them. But it is a skill they've never been taught. Right. That's why I say we have to take ownership for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see it on a daily basis. It, yeah. it's, it really is sad. You know, and truly when I, if I'm an outside observer and I, and I see it happening, what I, what I find the most sad is um, when, you go, when you go to a restaurant or you, you see a, a, a younger uh, culture, um, considered uh, millennial sure. out with their parents or even worse, their grandparents. And they're on their cell phone the entire time. They can't look their grandmother, grandfather in the eye when they're wanting to talk to them. Yep. Um, and it's just, it truly is sad because I know that generation um, that doesn't fall into that millennial category. Um, the, 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 
just what's going through their mind, I guess. It's, it's, it is sad. Well, so the, the millennials really get their uh, stigma, I think, because a lot of the studies are based upon when, these, when they hit that age bracket, puberty, yeah. per se. Okay. Um, so they're labeled, uh, a lot of the research will tell you, they're labeled at that coming to age area, 13 to 18 years old, okay. when they're striking in the information age. You know, iPhone, Apple, Mac, right. um, uh, Microsoft, all those areas. Samsung, they're blowing the world up with easy and access. Yeah. I mean, I remember being 18 years old and I had a phone that was also a walkie talkie. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just weird stuff. I never got into it because it wasn't my thing, but I know people that were like astonished by it and they want to know the insides and outs of everything. Mm -hmm. So this generation then became hooked on it. It's like a drug. It is. It the is. Technology is like a drug. It is very much so. I, and one of the things I've noticed, once again, I have five kids. I've been around this culture for a long time. And we have rules in our house because of it. FYI, people, there's nothing wrong with rules. <laughs> and FYI, kids throw fits. It's okay. I still say no. Right. Okay. Technology has become a babysitter. Yes, it has. So when you raise your six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old with technology as a babysitter, do not be shocked when you have an 18, 19, 20 year old who does not know how to function without it. Mm hmm. It's an addiction. Correct. There was a study. There was a study that put out there, and it was some. It was astronomical. It was like eighty-four percent or whatever um, of the millennial culture that said losing their cell phone would be far more devastating than losing their car. Jeez. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, your car is what gets you back and forth to work, wherever, yeah, or where, yeah, where you need to go. Your phone, it's replaceable. <laughs> and now with the cloud, you lose nothing. You lose nothing. Yeah. I can lose my phone today, buy a new phone, hook in my cloud, and everything's restored. But that's what we've come to. So once again, we have to take ownership for this culture that's been created. And you want to talk about work habits. You want to talk about laziness. You want to talk about entitlement. Let me tell you something right there. You think these kids invented those? Do you think this culture invented that? They did not invent no. that. That is a learned trait. It is. I mean, if you never held that child accountable... Don't be surprised when they're an adult who doesn't know how to be held accountable. For sure. No, a, a 2016 study uh, by Manpower Group found that 73% of millennials work more than 40, 40 hours per week, and the average millennial work week is 45 hours. Uh, the author concluded that millennials are working as hard, if not harder, than other generations. So where does the idea that millennials are lazy come from? Uh, the answer is that millennials define work and productivity different than other generations. Correct. So I think, again, it's what type of lens are you looking to looking through? So for example, example, millennials use uh, technology to automate and streamline organization uh, processes to make their jobs easier. Um, older co co-workers might view this as laziness while millennials view, view it as a way to boost productivity. And then also a PwC study found that 75% of millennials believe that technology makes makes them more effective at work and that 50% said their managers don't understand that, that the technologies that they're using. And I would agree with everything you just said. And then I would argue everything you just said on balance. Yes. Because there are some things you cannot replace. I agree. I How agree. many times have you found yourself in a situation as a business owner, mm -hmm. as a business owner, where if you look back and said, if I would have handled that face-to-face, person-to-person, right. instead of via cell phone or via email, sure. it would have been done so much differently. Well, because it's so easy to forget the, the power behind personal connection and one-on-one -on -one interaction. Because we're like, we have this communication device in our hand. Let me just shoot them a quick text about this problem or this event that happened or whatever it might be. Correct. And it, A, A first, the first point is when you're not face-to-face, -face, that subject can't, it, they can't see read emotion. you and There's see no emotion. your emotion. There's no Correct. Emotion. Yeah. It, it's hard to show emotion through a text. And more times than not, people are going to read the opposite of emotion that you're trying to portray just because it is so hard because they're going to hear it either how they want to hear it or they're going to hear it in a defensive mode. Yeah. So it, it, it truly does. Um, <laughs> any business transaction, interactions, whatever it may be, um, you know, unless it's something simple or small. So you did this should today. Should be done in person. You did this today. Um, and it's, I guess it now it'd be considered very old school. You made follow-up calls to a lot of customers. I did, yeah. Phone calls. Phone calls. Where they heard your voice. They heard yes. your emotion. They heard your affirmation, your yeah. appreciation. Yeah. They heard your sincerity. Correct. Now, you could have easily sent all those in emails. 
and they would have been like, oh, I got an email. He's thankful, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. If I get that, I'm like, okay, this guy cut and pasted 100 of these. Right. When you phone call somebody, you're not there personally, but your voice, 9 times 10, will tell the story. It will. They heard that. They heard the emotion. They felt the emotion, and that goes a long way. It does. Yeah, that's an excellent point. But that's, once again, this is a culture that we as generations have created. Have. There's a, uh, a psychologist, and she calls this the everybody gets a trophy culture. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, I get it. I do. I get it. I, I get that um, we want everybody to feel good and to be positive. But let me tell you something, folks. There is something positive about failing. Yes. There is something very positive about failing. There is something very positive about setting a goal and not reaching it. Mm -hmm. And we limit ourselves when we say, okay, you set a goal, you didn't reach your goal, but guess what? I'm going to reward you anyways. That is nothing but negativity Mm -hmm. because it teaches that individual, my good enough is good enough. Correct. And that's not true. It's a horrible mindset. I don't care what anybody says. That is not true. And you and you, we broke we broke the show with it. This culture that constantly needs special gratification, and I say special because it's gratification that's forced. Mm-hmm. It's not natural, right? So now are we going on to the now I'm giving fake gratification to appease somebody, <laughs> right? If you're if you're a, a, an individual who's really seeking a passion or even just seeking a, a common goal of being successful, you don't want that. Mm-hmm. You do not want that in your life because you're. That's not real. Well, Mark, I th- the the whole trophy thing brings back brings us back to subject A. That why well, don't um, when you were a kid you played a lot of sports. Did everybody get a trophy when you played? No, maybe first and second. Um, I I know my kid. Well, my kid started. It was always first, second, third. There's always a first, second, third. Yeah, because you always second, third. Too. Yeah, you you always had that you know that last game where third and fourth place were playing to get that third right. place trophy. Well, now, I don't care where you go. There's 50 boxes filled with trophies, and they've even taken off, like, for those other kids, it's called, like, a participation trophy. Make me yak. <laughs> Have you seen that one commercial? Yeah. Uh, the car commercial or something? The kid, the little boy won a trophy, and, uh, you know, his, his dad was walking back to the car, and I, I don't know. I can't remember exactly what he, he either took the plate off or he did something for it, but... Um, it was, it was, it's, it's the same thing. And it's just, it's just sad because you see on a, on a day-to-day basis. And I, I think that's what, um, we are seeing today, the effects of it today in the workforce. Subject A said in the interview today that, um, the, the, the appleasing that they, she has to uh, please her, her employees. Um, and, and more so, you know, one of her, their cons, like I said earlier, like in order, in order for her to tell one of her employees that they did something wrong. They they almost need she she feels the need to give them a compliment first. Yes, or, or boost their boost their morale before you tear it back down. Instead of walking in and be like, "Hey, you did X, Y, and Z wrong. We let's fix it. This is how we're gonna fix it. Do you understand? Good, great. We're moving on." And but now it's like, "Hey, you're a great employee. You know, you do a lot of good things for this company. You know, th- we we did this wrong." Yeah, but wrong then over when they here. get fired, they're going, "I don't know. I'm being fired. Exactly. You told me I was a great employee." And that's why the turnover rate amongst millennials is so freaking high. Yes, they're constantly Constantly going from job to job. Yes. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you a great little fun fact right here. This is nuts. 70% of the millennial culture are friends with their supervisors on social media. And you're like, well, what's the big deal with that? No. Right, no. Because that line should not be crossed. No. Because now it's personal. Correct. Now when you have to make a business decision, it's going to hurt no matter For what. Sure. Because you cannot go in as a professional. Correct. Because now there's this link where like, yeah, but you know my family and I know your family. And mm-hmm. by doing this, so chances are you're hurting the business because either A, you keep them too long. Right. Or B, yes. you've now severed any potential area where there could be a friendship. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, you hate me as a person. No, no. <laughs> this just isn't working. For sure. And guys, Mark brings up a great point there because it – don't don't take it the wrong way because as an employer it is important to get to know your 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 employees to on a personal level Invest. investing Invest. your time investing your your love and care to them yes. um but there's a there's a very very thin line that gets drawn and it, you don't cross it because if they are cancer to what you were doing in, within your company and and you're going to let emotions become involved you're going by, to fail your your company will fail and you, you're absolutely going to fail yeah I mean, it's just going to happen. You yep. cannot do that. 
because then it's so much harder when you have to be the boss. Yeah. I mean, there was a there was a video that went viral, um, and this this literally goes back to all this, and it's it's a dad um, having a very awkward conversation with his young son, about ten years old probably, and he's leaving soccer practice, and he's giving him this whole speech about deserve to play, you're not trying hard enough, you need to make a decision, blah 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 blah, and I think some people uh, attach that to one far side of uh, you know really the the gauge. And then everybody gets the trophies on the other side. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you folks, when your child fails, you have a great opportunity. Oh, yeah. Parents, um, whether, whether you're, you're actually their parent or if you're just a guardian, you have a phenomenal opportunity to teach this child a life lesson. Mm-hmm. And it can begin at six, seven, eight years old. It can. Yeah. Um, now, I personally wouldn't go about it the way this guy did. Right. But I've had these conversations with my children. And the conversations I have with my children are, if you're setting goals, do not let anybody work harder for your goal than you. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's that simple. Yeah. Don't let anybody else want your goal more than you. Right. And that includes me as your dad. If this is what you want to do, then you have to choose. This is the sacrifices I'm willing to make. And failure is a part of that. Correct. Correct. And I've, I coached for years, and I always told the kids, you will always learn more from losing than winning mm-hmm. because it's a great gauge of where I am. Yeah. All these high school kids right now, you're getting ready to start off this Friday night. Mm-hmm. Well, when you hear this show, last Friday night, right. the last opening week of your senior year. Mm-hmm. And almost all these kids around this area, they're all going to go play for Ohio State, right? They all <laughs> have this lofty goal. Yeah. That's fantastic. First of all, Ohio State football players are the elite of the elite, mm-hmm. Okay. But you'll have these goals to play next level. Right. First thing you should do when you don't reach your goal is look back and say, what didn't I do? Correct. Not what didn't coach give me, give me the opportunity. My parents didn't provide me this. What didn't I do? Mm-hmm. When you're sitting on your Xbox or sitting on your phone and you could have been in the weight room or you could have been eating a certain meal that's going to help you be the best you, it's what didn't you do. Right. Those are the teaching moments that you can have with your children, even at young ages. For sure. What are you doing? Are well, you... Are you practicing when no one's looking? Correct. It's the simple stuff. You guys hear you hear about it growing up your entire life. And I I, I highly encourage you guys. I did it, I did it myself when I was in high school. I did it in my college playing days. You know, I I constantly reminded myself that at the end of the season, I'm going to personally ask myself the question, looking in the mirror, did you do everything? Everything you could do to be the best you. I I did that. And I asked myself that question. In high school, I was confidently answered. I said, yes, I did. I did everything I can. Now, think about that. Are you at this stage in your life right now, are you able to, at the end of your year, able to look at yourself in the mirror and did I do everything I do? Or are you you the one, like Mark said, are you on your Xbox? Are you, you, do you fall in that 85 percentile, you know, being on your phone or not eating or not going to the gym, doing things when coach is watching? Because if, if you can't confidently answer that question, you're going to live in regret. Well, and I, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave this uh, high school sports topic here because I don't want to sit a lot of time on it. A lot of these other kids, the other thing you're missing out, it's not just the field. It's not just the weight room. No. It's what are you doing in the classroom? Yeah. Because let's say you are this extreme talent. If you're not meeting the credentials in the classroom, you're now getting rid of so many universities that could even potentially, potentially recruit you. Mm-hmm. No one else can control that but you. Right. Okay, you have bad teacher, big deal, overcome it, Mm -hmm. overcome it. But on the flip side of this, this applies directly to the workforce as well. If you're the person who says, I want to be super successful, I want to be a managerial type, I want to be a supervisor. Okay, well, that's just like everything else. What extra steps are you taking? Yeah. What are you learning from your failures? How are you becoming more efficient at your craft? Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're going into work every day and you're treating work the same way that you treat you know, doing your laundry, it's like, it's something I only do when I have to. Well, then guess what? You're going to be stuck in that mode. Mm -hmm. You're going to be, you're going to be the poster child for millennial culture. Yeah. They're going to say, oh, you're lazy. Oh, you won't do anything unless I tell you you're doing a fantastic job and blow smoke up your butt the whole time. For sure. Don't be that person. And I don't care if you were born from 78 to 2000. I don't care when you were born. I know people that were never born that generation that are just like that. Right. This is, this, yeah, it's not a generation. It's no. a culture. All these, um, and you, you say it great, all these things that are out there, these false facts, 
about this generation, Mm -hmm. they apply to so many other people. And that's why we're saying it's a culture. It's something you're adopting on your own. Some of it's self-inflicted. And you know what I'm here to say? As a parent of five children, if my children aren't successful, some of that failure is mine. Yeah, I would agree. It absolutely is. Yeah. I think that's good. And, you know, moving, moving through this topic, guys, you know, I'm going to put a little twist on here. Um, You know, I, I, it's, it's, this one's tough because millennials live, we live in this, this culture, this life of technology, like we've touched on a lot. Um, And I think millennials, you know, you could sit here and be like, okay, what can I take away what, what can we take away as a whole, as a society, as a culture, um, you know, to, to change the, the, the mindsets and the opinion about millennials? I think the stereotypes and the negativity is constantly going to be there. And are we going to change a culture as a whole overnight? No. It, I don't know if it's ever going to be possible, you know. But what, what we can change, like Mark has just touched on a lot, is what, what you can do within your home. Yeah. But also, what can you do as, as maybe a millennial listening to this or viewing as an this? As what an can you do, you know, on your own? Does this, for example, does this mean you need to to try to throw out, you know, social media and everything that's toxic, you know, people maybe say is toxic in your life. No, that's not necessarily what I'm saying. Now, before I move on, if it is toxic, you need to identify that and you do need to get rid of it. But subject C that I talked with today actually brought up an excellent point. And he said it's like a double-edged sword. So depending on the lens you look through, um, social media can be used for either a motivation tool or it can be used as a depression tool, uh, a lust tool, yeah. a, 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 a vein, whatever it may be. Um, as, as millennials, I think it's important to, to be that chameleon or that zebra, zebra. like yeah. we talked on last episode, and, and be different. And, and to use those tools, don't just be like, okay, millennials or this generation, this culture we live in, this is, I heard, I've heard all these facts and all these good points, you know, we just need to be that zebra and, and remove it all. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is you guys need to change the lens that you're looking, for, looking through and, and use those, those tools that are designed or are um, the, the growth of these, this technology exponentially has de- been done by millennials, use that stuff for motivation and use it for the good instead of, instead of being that individual that, you know, can't look up from their phone or, or, it, or it's spreading viral depression or, uh, or vein or whatever it might be. You kind of know where I'm going with this? Yeah, I think, I think the thing that people need to do is, is you need to understand that every aspect of your life is a part of your brand. Yeah. Okay, so if your social media, part of your brand, it's, it's what sells you. And if you think that uh, people you may not talk to on a regular basis, but they're around you and they know who you are, aren't creeping on that or checking out your stuff, you're wrong. Okay. Yeah. And then they're making judgments on that. If your work habits or maybe some of the things that you do, such as you're so caught up in seeing one side of the technology as the answer for everything, that becomes a part of who you are in your brand. That's how people make this. Right, right wrong, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. If you are someone right now who is falling as a victim to these stereotypes, if you are, here's what I would encourage you to do. I would encourage you to look at your life and say, where in my life, why are they making these assumptions about me? Okay. And then say, okay, do they have, do they have any weight here, 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 here? Right. And if you find an area where you're like, okay, I can see why they would think that. Yeah. Just improve yourself. Just don't do it for them. Do it for yourself. A little bit of criticism, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong. I, I function high on criticism. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't take it as a negative. Take it as a positive to be better. Same thing with conviction. Absolutely. Same thing with But conviction. the best thing you can do is sell yourself every single Correct. day. Correct. Every single day. Because these old people who don't get it, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I've been around them. They do come around. But this is also a very old-fashioned habit. You have to prove yourself first. Yeah. Everybody, this, this, if you're, if you're in a generation Y or you're a millennial or you're part of this culture and you think that they're, they're separating you and you're the first culture to ever go through this, I'm here to tell you, you're not. No, no, no. Every generation goes through that period of you have to prove yourself first. Right. Or every generation goes, goes through the generation before them. Oh, that, that generation behind us. They're, guess what? They're this, they're that. Embrace it. Yeah. Embrace it. 
and then be the best you. Don't worry about everybody else. Correct. Yeah. Embrace it and be the best you. Yeah, and I think that's that's the true facts, um, disputing and and really you know making myth making all these uh, these stereotypes mythical yeah. of you know helping others you know learn about. I'm sorry, my phone just buzzed. Um, learning you know who you are personally as a yeah. person. Like well, we and I think on. as an older generation, we have to remember and let's not just forget where we came from. Right. We made a lot of the same dumb mistakes. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've watched our 20 year old, um, mature immensely from the age of 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's like a whole different person. It happens. Yeah. Okay. We should, we can't be expect our, our expectations are too high. Yeah. Okay. And if your expectations are going to be this high, then be a part of the solution. Correct. Okay. Don't sit there and just knock them down. Don't be that person that tries to keep them in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Be that person who says, okay, they're at least out here trying. How can I help them be better? And if they if they literally ignore everything you say, walk away from that saying, okay, well, maybe I just laid the foundation and the next person that comes around will be the person they latch on to and they, they grow from. For sure. Just accept it. Yeah. The worst thing you can do, the worst thing we do as a human population is we prejudge. Yeah. It's the worst thing we do. And all we do is take a bad situation and we make it worse. Assumptions. Go listen to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we just... We have to stop with the assumptions. We have to stop with the prejudgment. And, you know, it takes a village. And for some of us people, it took a city. Yep, it did. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Um, There's so much more information on this, folks. I would love to keep going. I could go for hours. Literally, yeah. I mean, there's so much information we didn't even touch on. Oh, my gosh. Um, but like I said, with respect to your time, we try to keep this down and throw the facts out to you. But also, we want to give you a little bit of education. Guys, Google searches are easy. Studies are easy to read. For sure. There's so much information out there. Yeah. No, if you're an individual, you know, scrutinizing the millennials, just look up some of the facts, you know, that we even touched on or what's put out there on the internet. Well, and if you're a supervisor. I found myself to be amazed. Yeah. I No, trust me. Well, I even told you. I was yeah. like, there's so, we talked this morning like at 6 a.m. Yeah. But I, if you're a supervisor or someone who is a, a manager or a lead, whatever it is, and you're dealing with us on a regular basis and you're the person that just hates millennials. I will also tell you this too. Learn some different communication skills. Okay. Adapt just, be, and overcome. just because they don't <laughs> function the way you're used to functioning doesn't mean you can tweak things here or there and get the most out of them. Yeah. So as much as we want them to improve as a culture, we as a culture too have to adapt. We have to change. Yeah. I think I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm not going to even touch on the non-millennial side and I'll just leave it at, at this, you know, for millennials. Um, we've already said this, but if you're going to take away one thing, one thing from this podcast, like Mark said a little bit ago, walk out into this world uh, trying to be the best you, like yeah. we have talked about. Yeah. Okay, and despite or just whatever all the stereotypes, be rid of that. Just be, just be a good person, love individuals, um, and, and be a hard worker. I promise you, you won't get classified into this culture. No, your classification would be he's a heck, he or she's a heck of a hard worker. Heck yeah. You know that's that's all I ever wanted in life. Yeah. 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 Don't don't settle for average. Yeah. Don't settle for average. Keep chasing, keep chasing your dreams. Don't um, want don't let anybody want it more than you want it for yourself. Yep. Okay. That's good. No, That's fantastic. Good. So sponsor number two. Yeah. And uh we held them off to the end of the show because it was such a it was such an important topic. We didn't want to break it up because yeah. we didn't want to you know really break up the vibe that was going on there. But we would not be able to bring this show to you guys. Definitely not at the level in which we do. And I'm here to tell you. Tip Hat Media, Lincoln Meikle, this guy is next level. I mean, if you're seeing the stuff he's throwing up behind us right now, this stuff is top notch. I'm, I'm here to tell you, he's way bigger than Central Ohio. Right. Okay. This guy is going to, he's getting love from everywhere. You talk about the technology that you see in LA and the movies and, and New York, all these fancy, unbelievable things that you can't even imagine how they're doing it. The graphics, the images. The, the computer genius that's behind this millennial, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. It okay, is. And as you see the graphics that he's thrown up behind me, as you see the production of this show, this guy knows no limits with his technology. Yeah. He, is, he is one of the people that we've talked about uh, just now. And people may stereotype our Lincoln, um, but the only way to stereotype him is amazing. Fact. Because Tip Hat Media is top notch. There is no company too big for Tip Hat Media. No. And there is no company too small. Right. Um, he provides services to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just an unbelievable company, and we're so happy to be working with him. Yeah. And aside aside from his talents and his capabilities, guys, he's just a great guy to work with. Very, yeah. He's he's just a good dude. 
Um, you know, it's, I, so I highly encourage anybody and everybody. I like to work with people who are passionate. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's more passionate about their skill than Lincoln. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's real, real OG. If you can be OG at that level, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All I know is he won't let us borrow his camera, so it must be really good. <laughs> that's a fact, yeah. <laughs> no, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Good Wonderful. Deal. Reach out to us. If there's something we touched on that you like, don't like, disagree, yeah. or we didn't go deep enough into something you want, reach out to us. DM us. Yeah. Hit us up. Shoot us a tweet. Whatever it is. Yeah, before the show launched, I, I, I like joked around to Mark. I was like, this topic literally could be like its like its own little season, like one, two, and three. So. Like miniature podcast Netflix. Ooh, boom. Okay, you're onto something there. Yeah, if Netflix, if you're watching this, we're in. Yeah, <laughs> we're, that's cool. No, but seriously, so if you guys want us to keep going on this yeah. topic or if you feel like you heard enough, that's that's cool too. There's so um, many layers I think to we'll cake. come back to this eventually. Um, but, you know, just if you guys got it, if you I thought an area within this topic you want us to touch on. Absolutely. You know, know, and before we forget, before we forget, I don't want to because she's worked really hard on this. This is now two weeks in a row. Uh, <laughs> Ashley from Central Ohio has <laughs> sent us her animal fun fact. She got vetoed last week. Yeah. Um, but this week, she's very confident in this one. The shrimp, which does have a heart because every living creature has a heart. Its heart is not actually located in the body. It's located in its head. Hmm. So for all you shrimp lovers, my wife, if you're listening... Um, when you're eating that fleshy, gross part that you have to devein, you're not eating the heart because the heart's actually in the head. Okay. I guess that's assuring to some people. Yeah. It's interesting. So, Ashley, you're getting a free shirt. You are, Ash. Good topic or good uh, fun fact, I guess. Ish. Ish. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks again for tuning in with us again. We are officially on iTunes. Just a quick reminder there. SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Check us out. Please subscribe. That lets, that lets us know that you guys are at least liking what we're hearing um, and comment, and, you know, any questions, concerns, um, ideas, whatever it may be. And we'll yeah. be sure to get back with you. We have an abundance of T-shirts that we are looking for some takers. So, Absolutely. again, send us in your fun animal fact. Um, and, again, thank you again. To all our high school football in. players. Uh, uh, and enjoy it because it doesn't last yeah. forever. No, it doesn't. No, no. All right. no, that's all I got. Awesome. All right. I'm out. Delivery links. I'm out.